Well, hello everybody. Good to have you with us this afternoon. We're just in Belfast here, near the Boucher Road. Uh, Windsor Park football ground is in the back of uh, the, the camera shot here, the home of Northern Ireland. And I've got a good friend with me here, uh, John Weir, our good brother. He's an evangelist. He's doing a great work for the Lord. And I've just asked John to give a wee short word of testimony. Some of you know him from the drive-in missions and gospel missions, and we trust you'll pray for God's servant uh, if you're a Christian, that God will continue to use him and bless him. I'm going to ask John just to tell us how he came to know the Saviour. God bless you, John. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Well, I want to thank the Reverend Higginson just for this opportunity today, just to share a personal word of testimony. And it's always just a wonderful privilege to be able to tell people what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in your life. And I'm from the Donegal Road area in Belfast and grew up here right beside uh, Windsor Park. And like a lot of young lads growing up in the streets of Belfast, this was my dream, uh, to be a professional footballer, to play here in the National Stadium. And uh, at 16, I was going to many different clubs in England and Scotland. At 16, it was just about to sign for Chelsea, which was a wonderful uh, dream of mine. I had a wonderful player called Gianfranco Zola. He was an Italian, he was small, I'm small. And at 16, I, I was just about to sign for Chelsea. but. Sadly, disaster struck, I hurt my knee and uh, come home and joined Linfield here who play at Windsor Park and at 19 it was just about to break into the Linfield first team and disaster struck the second time, I hurt my knee in a bad way and I had to stop playing football completely at 19. I just felt at that time that my whole life had fell apart uh, and sadly I had no Christian upbringing growing up, was never in a Sunday school. We, uh, never had a family Bible or anything, but, but deep down in my heart, I, I still believed in God. And, and at 19, when I felt as if my whole world had just uh, fell apart at 19, I got on my knees in my bedroom and I asked God to help me in my life. And as I looked at the stars at night and the birds and the trees and the wonders of creation, I knew there had to be a God. And as I got on my knees and asked God to help me, he did. He heard my prayer. And that same night, I knew I had to go to church. I hardly had been to church before, never heard the gospel before, but my mother was working with a Christian lady uh, called Peggy Reardon, and Peggy started praying for our family uh, at this difficult time. And I, I went to Peggy's church that same night and heard the gospel preached, heard about the cross, heard about the blood, heard about how I could be forgiven of my sins, and if I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart and life, I could go to heaven when I died. And that's what I did at 19 years of age. And uh, my life has been completely transformed. I remember the next day uh, going to buy a Bible in the Faith Mission bookshop, as I didn't have one and, and couldn't wait then to start going to the prayer meetings and the Bible studies and couldn't wait to tell everybody about this man that had, that had changed my life. I didn't know any Christians, there was no Christians in my family, but I started to pray for them and God started to work in my family. My mum uh, started coming to church with me and she had went to Sunday school, the, the seed had been planted in her heart and around 12 years ago my mom accepted the Lord as her saviour and it's just wonderful to see the change in her life. And We started praying for my dad who was just a man of the world and I used to leave little gospel leaflets about the house uh, to try and reach him and he read one particular track about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and after reading that gospel leaflet he couldn't settle, he couldn't sleep, he started to experience conviction of sin and that little gospel leaflet spoke about when the Lord returns that two will be in a field, one will be taken, one will be left, there will be two in a bed, one will be taken, one will be left and my dad was driving down the Ravenhill Road just up from the Martyrs Memorial Church and he pulled the car into Cherryville playing fields and he asked the Lord to save him and it's just been wonderful to see the change in his life and we started then praying for my sister and around 10 years ago Michelle accepted the Lord as her saviour and then around eight years ago, my two aunties uh, at a little gospel mission I was taking in Finnick, he trusted the Lord. So I give the Lord all the glory for saving me, for transforming my entire family. I don't know where I would be today if it hadn't have been for his grace and his love and his mercy. And after I was converted, I got a real burden to win souls. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And that's the desire of my life now, is to ground the province, uh, preaching the gospel, with one objective, to see men and women and young people saved and born again of the Spirit of God. I gave up my job seven years ago. I was working in a school in Newton Abbey and there was a lady down in the hospital. I couldn't get to see her. 
but I was able to send another servant of God along. But I said, Lord, that will not happen again. If there's somebody down in the hospital needs to see me, I will be there. And now I have the great privilege of doing the work of an evangelist uh, around the province. So I would value your prayers as we preach the gospel in all different places. And uh, thank you so much uh, for listening to this short word of testimony today. I give the Lord all the glory. And maybe there's even somebody listening and, and you're not yet a Christian. Maybe you have never experienced salvation. Friend, why not today call upon the name of the Lord? The Bible makes it clear in Romans 10, 13 that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Or maybe there's even somebody watching and you're backslidden. You've got away from the things of God. You've lost your love. Oh, why not from today get back to the Lord? And even dear Christian friend watching, you've been given a gift. You've been given a talent. You've been given an ability. Let's do something for the Lord in these last days. I know the Reverend Higginson here is burdened for revival. I'm burdened for the Lord to move to. I know even as God's own dear people that we would get revived, that we would get inspired, and we would get challenged to serve the Lord with all of our hearts. As the poet said, there's only one life. It'll soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. May the Lord bless you today. And if I can be of any help, the Reverend Higginson can be of any help, please please get in touch with your servants for Christ's sake. May God bless you richly and thank you for taking the time today to listen to this short little video. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us, folks. And this is John Weir, Roger Higginson. We're praying for you and may God bless you and may you come to know this wonderful, wonderful Saviour. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Amen.